Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Pharmacypedia. In this video, we are going to discuss further about a very interesting topic from the subject cosmetics and cosmeceuticals and that is about hair dyes. So let us begin. So in this video, we are going to discuss further about the part 1 of the hair dyes that is about the formulation and the composition of the hair dyes. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel Pharmacypedia for getting further updates and notifications. So what is the purpose of using the hair dyes? Hair dyes are the chemical substances which are being used for the changing the color of the hair. So we use basically hair dyes to have a different colors on the hair. You must have seen women these days are using a number of different types of the colors on their hairs. So this was not as, er as earlier. In that additional time, people used to use the henna. That is also known as the mehndi and uh, the chemical component in that was the lawsonia. So the henna was applied to keep the change in the color. But nowadays in modern times, there are a number of the substances and number of the chemicals which are having uh, and providing different color shapes to the hairs and being widely used. So let us explore them. So what are the reasons for having the hair colors? We basically want to have the hair colors to, uh, to our hairs. The very first reason is to change the natural color of the hairs. Some people prefer to have the different colors, vibrant colors on their hairs. And some people use the colors to actually mask the gray color of the hair. So when the colors, uh, black color gets converted to the white colors, people can mask them by using the different colors. Then, and the third reason of using the hair colors and the hair dyes is to change the color of the hair temporarily for particular occasions. So people the, these days have the taste of changing the hair colors. So for a particular occasion, they may have a the different color and for other occasions they may have the different color. For, so in that case people prefer to use the different types of the hair dyes which are being available these days for changing the color of the hairs. So what should be the ideal characteristics of the hair colors? See one is applying the chemicals over the hairs. So there are there are certain criteria they should need to fulfill. Since these are being chemicals uh, they should fulfill certain criteria so to ensure the safety of these chemicals on your hairs. So the very first desired feature is that any type of the hair dye should not injure the hair shaft. It should not actually damage the hair structure. If you have closely monitor the hair structure, the hair is made up of a protein known as the keratin. So the hairs is again divided into three parts that is the cuticle, cortex and medulla. Then the hair dye should not be irritant and free from sensitization. So most of the hair dyes have to undergo the sensitization test for the eyes, sensitization test for the skin to, in order to ensure that they are actually not causing any sort of the irritation to the skin or to the eyes. Then the ideal hair dye should not have any sort of the systemic toxicity. So it should not reach the bloodstream. It, the primary purpose is to change the color here. So it should not penetrate the Bloods, blood level, it should not penetrate the capillaries. Then the ideal hair dyes, dyes should be stable to the physical factors. So the change in the environmental condition should not alter the chemical properties of the ideal hair dyes. Then it should not also have an effect of shampoos, brilliantness, setting lotions on the dyed hairs. So the ideal hair dyes should not damage the hairs. It should be free from toxicities. It should not have any sort of the systemic toxicities. It should not change as per the environmental conditions. It should remain stable in the formulation which is being sold in the market. It should not actually disturb the natural gloss of the hair and it should not change the texture of the hairs. So these dyes are make, sometimes used temporarily or sometimes even used permanently should not actually cause damage to the hairs and to the body. So an ideal dye should have these characteristics features. So the next thing is about the formulation and composition of these dyes. Now these dyes are composed of a um, large number of chemicals like dyes which is the main imparting color, imparting substance. Then there are certain substances known as the modifiers that we are going to discuss in detail. Then apart from modifiers we have antioxidants, alkalis, soaps, ammonia, 
wetting agents and fragrances which have been added to the hair dyes so the composition of hair dyes when we talk about the permanent hair dyes it is little bit complex and that a chemical reaction needs to take place so these substances are being added up to ensure that the reaction takes place completely and the desired color is being done to the hairs so when we talk about the types of the hair colors hair dyes which are available in market these days they are basically segregated into three types first is the temporary hair colors second is the semi permanent hair colors and third is the permanent hair colors there is even another category known as the hair lightening colors hair lightening is simply the bleaching of the colors whereby the melanin of the color is being reduced so we are going to discuss these uh, hair colors one by one so first let us discuss about the temporary hair colors temporary hair color as the uh, term signifies the color is not permanent it fades off easily it is it remains for a temporary short duration of time at least 3 to 4 washes and it goes off autom automatically so uh, the reason behind this is that actually the structure of hair is uh, divided into three parts first is the cuticle medulla and the cortex part so the uh, these hair dyes color temporary hair dyes colors is not able to reach inside the hair that is about the medulla and the cortex part it only is able to provide the color to the outermost layer that is the critical part so if the color is not able to penetrate the inner layers of the hair it is not going to stay for long time so the temporary hair colors like uh, natural mehndis and all they are actually covering the critical part that is why they gets uh, fades off easily after 3 uh, to 4 washes because the, they are not able to penetrate the inner layers of the hairs next we move on to the semi permanent hair color as the term signifies semi permanent it stays longer than the temporary hair colors it also gives stronger and more permanent coloration to the hairs some colors are removed in four to eight shampoos or four to eight washings so the stay period of semi permanent hair colors is more than the temporary hair colors the washings are normally six to eight wash after washings then it fades off then the best part is that the dyes which are used in these semi permanent hair colors they are not used in the combinations they are applied as such for example dyes which are being preferred for the semi permanent hair colors is like nitro aminophenols amino anthocyanins and nitrophenylidene diamine so these are the certain chemical substances which does not require any sort of the oxidation here i would like to explain few things when we talk about the hair dyes basically hair dyes are divided into two types oxidative and non oxidative when we talk about the uh, temporary hair colors or semi permanent hair colors it is like a non oxidation reaction whereby the dyes are actually coloring the outer cuticle layers of the hairs so they are not penetrating inside that is why they are actually washing off so when we talk about the temporary temporary stays for Three to four washes, whereas the semi-permanent hair dyes are able to penetrate little more than the temporary hair dyes. That is why their stay period is longer. It is up to six to eight washes. Uh, these are based on the non-oxidation reactions, whereby the the actually the color black color of the hair, uh, hair which is due to the presence of melanin is not disturbed. so actually it is getting colored over the black hairs or the gray hairs but what happens in the case of permanent hair dyes that we are going to discuss that comes into the category of the oxidation reactions oxidation reactions means we need sort of chemicals to initiate a reaction so that the hair hair dyes are actually able to penetrate the deep cortex part so once they are able to uh, penetrate the deep cortex part they can stay there for a prolonged period of the time which the other types of the temporary and uh, semi permanent hair dyes are not able to do these are the examples of the dyes intermediates which are used for the semi permanent hair dyes so you can see see the wide number of the shades like yellow orange red violet most of the dyes are from the nitro nitrophenol derivatives and anthrocyanin derivatives 
Next, we move to the permanent hair colors. As discussed earlier, but the permanent colors, hair color refers to the hair color products and the lightener containers, which is uh, being applied with the help of a developer. This developer is also known as the oxidizing agent, along with the alkalizing agent as a part of the ammonia or the ammonia substitute. So, with the tint containing the alkalizing ingredient is combined with the developer, mostly hydrogen peroxide, the peroxide becomes alkaline and diffuses through the hair fiber and in the cortex where the melanin is located. So, the lightening occurs when the alkaline peroxide breaks up the melanin and replaces it with a new color. My dear friends, here I would like to explain few things. When we talk about the permanent hair colors, there are a few things, few stages which has been happening, which is not uh, happening in the case of temporary or semi-permanent dye. So in the case of permanent uh, colors, basically two steps take place. First of all, uh, as hairs are composed of the melamine, which is actually imparting the black color to the hair. So first step is to actually bleach the hair. So, the black colors get converted to the white color after the bleaching and then the color is being added upon. The second stage comprises is the imparting color to those white hairs obtained after the bleaching. So, you must have seen some bleached hairs like having the yellowish or white tint. So, in this case, the this, this is a two-stage process. First is the breaking down of the melamin which is of black color to the white color. Okay, then once these white colors, bleached hairs are being produced, the second step is to color them. So, in this case, we, we actually does a oxidation reaction. So, for the oxidation reaction, we need two substances. First is the hydrogen peroxide and second is the ammonia derivatives. So, now when hydrogen peroxide are actually comes in contact with the ammonia derivatives, they basically causes a chemical reaction whereby uh, different uh, whereby it happens that the cuticle is broken down the hair shaft is little bit opened out which actually helps in the penetration of the color inside the hair so once this uh, penetration of the color inside the hair takes place the hair gets colored So, let us try to understand the dyes which are involved in the permanent hair dyes. So, as discussed, there are two types oxidation bases. Let us first try to understand the oxidation bases. Oxidation bases are basically the benzene derivatives like paraphenylene diamine. It is very popularly known as PPD or paratolidine diamine. So, they are derivatives of diamino anisole, aminophenol, phenylene diamine, etc. Next, let us try to understand the reactions and the formulation additives which are required for this chemical reaction to take place and for the uh, for causing the coloring through the permanent hair dyeing. So, when we talk about the permanent oxidative hair dyeing process, we basically require four substances. First, as indicating, is the coupling base, which is comprising of the aromatic amine, benzene derivative, aromatic amine with the substitutions at positions ortho or para. So, when you have the benzene ring at the ortho or para, when you have the substitute, that is actually acting as a coupling base for the reaction to take place. Then, second is the reaction modifiers. Then third is the alkalizing compounds and fourth is the oxidizing agents. This we are going to discuss further in the. So, you are now clear about the coupling basis. Next, we move on to the reaction modifiers and alkalizing compounds. So, the coupling basis used widely into the permanent hair dyeing colors is PPT paraphenylene diamine or paraphenaminophenol. So, they along with the uh, in reaction with the combination with the reaction modifiers. Now, what are the reaction modifiers? The reaction modifiers are ammonia compounds. Also called as couplers or aromatic compounds derived from benzene and are substituted by groups such as uh, NH2 and o, uh, hydroxyl group in the meta position which does not is uh, which does not present easy oxidation by the hydrogen peroxide. So, you clear you have the coupling bases. This coupling base get uh, reacted with the reaction modifiers such as benzene derivatives which are substituted at the matter position mostly the ammonia groups. Now they are uh, the, for taking the or the hydrogen peroxide group. So when PPD gets reacted with the hydrogen peroxide in the presence of the now they this chemical reaction will only take place at basic or alkaline pH. So for creating that basic or alkaline pH we need to have the alkalizing compounds. So the most commonly alkalizing compounds which are used is the ammonia. So in the form of ammonia hydroxide or monoethanol amine. So you 
friends, you can easily understand that three things which are important for the permanent hair dyeing is the first is the coupling base recognized by PPD, paraphenylene diamines along along the combination of the hydrogen peroxide with in the presence at of alkaline pH which is being achieved by the addition of ammonia. So when these things combined, they did the reaction takes place. You must have also observed when we talk about the permanent hair dyes, it comes into the two packets, two sachets. First is in the hydrogen peroxide in the liquid form and second is the dye color. Okay. So, uh, other things which are being required are the oxidants. So, there are basically two types of the oxidants which are used. Uh, first is the hydrogen peroxide when the vehicle is the water or the sodium persulfate when it is a powdery substance. Now, the vehicles are also required. The oxidative dye in the form of the emulsion is the highest selling product in the market. So, other they, this is being available in other forms such as gels, solutions, powders, etc. also. But the most widely prevalent form is the uh, emulsion form. So friends, I think now you are clear about the formulation part of the temporary dyes, semi-permanent dyes and the permanent hair dyes. Please do understand that permanent hair dyes is a complex reaction process which takes place in three stages. So therefore that the formulation requirement is different. You need to have the coupling bases, you need to have the reaction modifiers, you need to have the oxidizing agents, you need to have the reducing agents so that you can have the complete reactions and, the, and after this complete reaction only uh, the the two processes which takes place is the bleaching of the hairs and then the added new color which actually penetrates deep inside the hairs which is actually causing the color to stay for a prolonged period of the time so that is why uh, the, uh, when we are using large number of substances for the permanent hair dyeing it is actually harmful in certain ways also like uh, for example the para PPD paraphenylene diamine is linked up with various endocrine disruptors also it is actually uh, causing infertility in some people so it is not recommended for pregnant women or the people who uh, whose, whose hormonal balance there is a hormonal imbalance so in that case it can cause further aggravation of the problem so, moreover, the other ingredients which are being used like hydrogen peroxide is widely used for the explosive purposes. So, if friends, you can understand the uh, chemical substances widely used into the permanent hair dyeing is not only uh, causing the damage to the hair uh, hair structure in a, for a prolonged period of time, but also a health hazard. So, one must be wise enough to actually select the proper type of the hair dye so that the, these kinds of the problem can be avoided. What I understand is that cosmetics is the substance which we use for adorning. We, we use for increasing the aesthetic appearance. But it should not at all at any term it should cause harmful effect on the body. If it is causing harmful effect, there is no point of take actually using the cosmetics. So my suggestion is that to um, all my students that when you uh, see someone using the permanent do share your uh, chemical knowledge about the various types of the harmful dyes which are being used up. In case you want to have a further discussion, I will share a further video about what are the harmful effects and how researchers have shown what are the actually harmful effects of using the permanent hair dyes colors and the uh, so chemical substances which are responsible for that. I hope this helps you. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you are coming to my channel for the first time, please do like, share and subscribe to Pharmacypedia for getting further notifications. Thank you. So if you have still not subscribed, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel.